How's it going guys? It's Mr. Lone Wolf, and uh, today I want to test out these mods. It's called the Mustang. I think this one's called the 5320. And there's a, a this is the six wheel version. There's a four wheel version as well called like the 4530, I believe. For the most part, it's this one, the six wheel version, I'm going to be testing. They're pretty similar, it's just that because this one's got a longer chassis, it can fit a lot more attachments. Uh, namely of which is this like medium log carrier, but more importantly it's got the the old style mud runner logging crane with it which uh, has just got better like pincers they have more force to them they actually hold on to the logs better um, yeah I'm gonna be doing this mission waterlogged where I've got to take three lots of medium logs to the quarry I've also got a bit of a plan for after that hence why on my uh, backup truck I've got a long log front that's on the actual chassis and there is a loaf a goddamn horse of a vehicle sat in there at the minute and uh, yeah, then the medium logging trailer. You've also got this crane on it, which appears to be a unique crane. I don't think it's as powerful as like the heavy wrecker crane, but it does seem pretty decent. Uh, it's also got plenty of length to it, that's of course what she said. And uh, yeah, overall it's pretty good. You've also got these two kind of setups. One's got a rollback on it, so obviously you can uh, transport various vehicles. Got another goddamn horse on there. The other one's got like just a two slot. Uh, sideboard really and then you got that's another six wheeled one it's a like repair kit thing on the back but as you can see it's kind of got the little repair bit but then barrels of fuel and spare tires at the back so instead of having to kind of pick between repairs or fuel you've got like a good chunk of both which is pretty nice and then that there that's the four wheeled version which again is a very nice truck it's very similar it's just because it's got a short wheelbase it can't fit stuff like the medium logging attachment the crane the rollback but it has got like that unique little uh, fuel thing on the back which does have some repairs with it as well. Certainly better than nothing. Um, yeah, so like I said, I'm going to go for this waterlogged mission. Uh, go and grab some logs from there. And again, I mean, I believe I've done this mission before, whether it was on the modded playthrough or not, I can't remember. But it was just an excuse to go and test these things out, really. It's just delivering logs. It's sort of irrelevant at this point, really, where I'm going. Um, yeah, so like I say, for this one, I mean, the first thing is the nice thing. Uh, because you actually have a log carriage on the truck itself and then you can tow a trailer that's already two lots of medium logs per truck I could do up to four obviously I could get another identical truck doing the road train behind me but like I said I only need three lots of medium logs for this and then a little while ago in one of the streams I had to do there's another mission on this region uh, I can't remember off the top of my head what it's called but you got to take three lots of long logs to the sawmill in Zimnogorsk and I've not got the uh, garage unlocked or anything in Zimnogorsk yet. I pretty much completed that mission a few weeks, a month ago on one of the live streams, but uh, I lost, I crashed and lost my last set of logs. So I've already kind of got the logs over on Zimnogorsk. Um, I just, in theory, need a crane because I had no crane abilities with me to be able to put the logs back on. And then, yeah, to deliver them. And that's why, like I said, I've got the uh, the large log thing on the second Mustang. And on Zimnogorsk, my uh, electric Bruce, he's got like the extended log trailer, the, like the other half of the long log trailer. So uh, anyway, we're here, fortunately on Drowned Lands, the, uh, that's why I quite like doing sort of some of the mod things on this map is the log thing is just around the corner and you can get medium and long from here and they're unlimited. Um, yeah, so we just packed the trailer quickly, but this is the, um, the logging crane that was basically like the one off Mudrunner. And it's just better, because like I've said, the thing that annoys me with the logging crane we've got recently is it's like an arcade machine where it just doesn't, it isn't powerful enough, it's like it's made to drop the toys, like, yeah, it's an arcade machine. This thing uh, it grips onto them for dear life, as you can see now, and not only that, but it's comfortably grabbed all three. Every single time I've ever picked the logs up, it's grabbed all three. I'm swinging the crane round, the logs aren't slipping out, the crane's not giving up and just letting go and dropping them all over the place. And even then when I kind of slam it into the roof a bit, they don't just jar their way out of the uh, crane until I let go. They're they're in there pretty good and they ain't going. And that's one of the main reasons like, I certainly prefer this crane. You can see, I think the pincers look like they've got a bit more kind of meatiness to them. Um, yeah, got that packed. Sometimes, I can't remember if I did it there or not. Sometimes you have to detach the trailer to pack stuff. It's not just this mod. I've noticed it on a few things where you can have like medium logs on the back and in a trailer. Um, yeah, so, and the other nice thing is, the uh, reason I sort of had these two slightly different setup trucks is, as you can see on this one, I also have the Mudrunner version of the logging crane, but I don't have, like, the medium log carriage and everything. You can just 
have it on the back. A bit like you know, just the little cranes you can normally have. And uh, yeah, it's got, yeah, it extends further than that, so it's got some pretty good reach. To be fair, trying to reach to the trailer all the way at the back is a little bit of a, uh, a stretch anyway. But again, you can see three logs on. I'm swinging it around like crazy. That time, one of the logs were actually sliding slightly through the crane a bit, which helped kind of offset the balance and make it go a bit a bit lively, to say the least. But I still, uh, yeah, I still prefer this to the like the logging crane we've got in the base game of Snowrunner, because I'd pretty much bet money on it. It would have just let go of all the logs then. Like the that tree would have kind of talked around and just prized the uh, the jaws of the log crane open. A little bit messing around, but yeah, as you can see, it kind of extends out, so I was just about able to reach. I just reached down and nudged a couple of those logs, like, further into the trailer. Got it packed, and uh, yeah, good to go. And as for the mod itself as well, it's uh, a lot of people who don't really want to go for, like, the overpowered or at least very good stuff. Um, this would probably suit them as well, because I actually feel it's been balanced pretty well within, like, the base game trucks. I'd probably put this somewhere around I don't know the bandit or the dolphin somewhere kind of around there like it's certainly not yeah leaps and bounds ahead it's not broken levels uh, I've got the top engine in there's about six I think six different engines they've all got slightly bigger numbers as you go down the list so long story short just yeah go up and down the list depending on uh, what power you require but like I said I've got the most powerful one in and yeah, this truck wasn't behaving like some unrealistic truck at all. It was behaving a lot like a, like an in-game base truck, but just, you know, a half-reasonable version. Like, not one of the weak early-game trucks that just can't handle these kind of maps. As usual, the uh, the medium logging trailer is a bit of a troll. You'll see here, in fact, I have to click unpack cargo to pack it, but then it wouldn't repack me. So I had to detach trailer, then pack cargo, then attach trailer. It's not the end of the world, and like I said, it's not specific to this mod. It's happened to me on quite a few different ones. As usual, the game's moaning because I've got my diffs on. <laughs> I wish it just wouldn't. I'm fine with engageable diffs, but it just makes it annoying when it keeps moaning about that. Obviously, it'd uh, help if I was looking where I'm going, but where would the fun in that be? <laughs> I'm too busy looking at my gigantic road train. And overall, I think he's made a pretty good, uh, good pair of road trains. I quite like doing the medium logs in a road train because you've got all like the little sections. As well, the steering on this is pretty decent. I've noticed at the minute when I'm towing, particularly with these heavy logs on the back, and I'm towing a trailer and then I'm winched to stuff, it's lifting a bit of weight off the front end. Not as bad as there was a mod, there was something I tested the other day that was pretty light on the front end. Oh, it might have been the Azov Bear. Um, yeah, I wouldn't say it was as bad as that, it was just every now and then, particularly when I was going up a steep hill like that, it did kind of like I was tipping backwards a little bit and it was lifting up the weight. But yeah, overall, I mean, they this truck kind of reminds me of, um, I can't think of the names of them, but in Mudrunner there was a lot of trucks that kind of looked quite like this, they all have different, like, C numbers and I don't yeah just phone numbers after like letters and stuff so it's kind of hard to remember like C255 I'm sure that was a pretty good truck the D series and E series trucks were easier to remember but I'm sure the B and C series trucks there was like five or ten of each so uh, yeah trying to remember them but yeah this for me feels like it's just been basically brought in from Mudrunner and it's sitting at around the same sort of power there's just a nice selection of um add-ons like I said through those trucks I showed you at the beginning it was just I ended up buying I think six of these and added a few various different things but you can have this kind of setup for logging uh, obviously on the one behind me I've got a logging crane but I don't have to have the medium log carriage uh, so I could have a long log set up on the one behind me which I will do later um, yeah the crane version like the big crane that was on it was definitely very good I'll show you at the end it um, lifting up uh, Taz so it's again I don't think it's like ridiculously strong like the uh, the heavy wrecker crane is that thing's able to lift like clubs and all sorts like it's nothing really but it's certainly I would say better than the base game cranes we had especially of late because they seem to be a bit weak of late but yeah it's good it's got like I said it's got a bit of an extra reach and all the rest of it so that's quite handy so whatever area of like the game you kind of I don't know you might want to try mods and kind of sort that area out like I said uh, 
the two little trucks I had that were like repair versions or fuel inversions so you've got that type of thing and then I had the other two one with the rollback one with the two slot sideboard so you've got that sort of area of uh, transporting vehicles or little bits of cargo and stuff so yeah there's kind of enough attachments to cater for all the different aspects of the game really just stopping here to uh, save the footage and change to some some nice weather <laughs> tend to get like I find particularly on the Russian maps uh, I get quite a lot of fog ever since they did the phase 2 update with Yukon yeah they've gone a little bit crazy with the fog someone's asking me the other day have I pretty much sort of sacked off doing uh, the Yukon region sort of yes and no I am I do plan to go back and do some of it or hopefully all of it one day but um, yeah the frame rate I get really bad frame rate on phase 2 because of the fog I believe it is the fog anyway, but I don't like the fog in general. Like I like, yeah, nice, bright, clear, sunny days. Mudrunner was quite a dark, bland, palette, gloomy game. And it had its own feel to it in that sense. But I like like the graphics and the views and everything on this Snowrunner are really good. So it's a shame to sort of then hide it all with fog. Especially when it appears to then lower your frame rate. As you can see there, I uh, yeah overcooked it a little bit. I was having too much, too much of a good time with my camera looking at the uh, road train slip down a ditch but overall it's got an autonomous winch on it which is very nice yeah tipping wise it feels pretty fair and balanced to be honest it's not eager to tip but it's not impossible I mean I did fly down a ditch as I was kind of trying to steer out of it I've got logs stacked pretty high so yeah it tipped fortunately it, well it does, I suppose it doesn't really matter because it's got the autonomous but it didn't go 90 degrees over so even if I had a normal winch I would have been able to sort of fire it up and get back out just as I did as you can see again I had to like quickly detach the trailer just to pack them both individually every now and then it does work and let you pack both of them at the same time I'm not 100% sure why it does what it does but again it's not really anything that's gonna break your game or make much of a difference and in high gear now another nice thing as well uh, in high gear it even when you get slowed down and you almost to the point you're stopping it's still allowing you to use high gear by the time you're almost stopped that's not necessarily the best idea you're probably best off dropping it into auto or low range for the diffs on but again though it's just nice that it stays in high for as long as you want it to it's better than the trucks that just immediately give out like the Derry 4520 as a prime example you're in high range with that it only has to see a bit of mud on the horizon and it'll panic and start trying to stall in high gear I think I got uh, sort of jumped over a bit of a big fat stone there that slowed me down a bit. Although I will say it's, and again it feels reasonably balanced, but it's not amazing through deep mud. I've got the chain on at the minute. I put a few different tyres on various different trucks. Obviously mix and match as you see fit. It's one of them. I put chained on. People always say use muds. <laughs> if I put muds on there'll be people saying use chained. There's always going to be like a few uh, different ones. These are like a custom version of chains and they all said excellent on the stats I believe except for the road which might have been average or whatever. Um, but yeah like they're not completely OP or anything but they still do pretty well. I mean I'm pretty uh, loaded up with logs, pretty heavy load going on so again I think it feels kind of balanced. I quite like the way as well as you're going through muddy sections like this it's kind of wallowing and wobbling around leaning side to side. And again, you can see, I mean, it's not untippable. Those moments there are getting a little bit close. It's cocking a wheel, but it's actually planted enough that it doesn't just immediately want to go. And that's the muddy section kind of through the middle of Drowned Lands. Horn. Mm, to be honest, I, I, the horn's not a bad sound. And I, I don't necessarily expect, like, a meaty P16 horn, because it's not that sort of size truck but maybe a little bit of a, a deeper meatier note <laughs> would be nice again though with the turning circle I remember going around there but it's like quite nice and fluid with its steering it's not erratic it's not kind of delay 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 and then wham it puts the whole steering in so I went wide and I was kind of following the ditch around that corner uh, just going wide enough so my truck behind me didn't catch on the lamppost and yeah again it was just like e easy to drive it around there there's a fuel station but I'm gonna uh, give it a miss you can see on the top of my truck you're actually able to uh, stick a few supplies on there which is pretty cool so it's got like its own little roof rack 
I did have a little go. I was able to put a loaf on the roof, but I wasn't able to pack the loaf. Uh, obviously, I've not got it in this situation anyway, because I knew I was going to be packing logs and everything. That's part of the reason why I put the horse, uh, yeah, kind of between the, the long log bars <laughs> on the uh, on the one behind. Always got to have a horse just to be safe. Uh, well, this one in front, sorry, hasn't got the roof rack thing on, because the uh, medium log crane, you can see it's got like a little carriage thing that sticks out. I'm not sure if you can equip it, but the one behind me has got it on. And uh, I can't remember, I think they offer like 170 repairs, maybe? I'm sure later on I do use it, because I crash just before I get to the delivery point and just damage a little bit of the truck, so I'm sure I use it then and we'll see. But again, it doesn't need to be loads. It's like when I bring the loaf, obviously 300 repair points is good enough. If I needed a shitload of repair points, I'd have to bring like a repair trailer or something, but it's just if you blow a tyre or you just whack something, you get a bit of a dodgy damage mechanic thing happens on this game where you can hit practically nothing like that. But sometimes it can completely delete your entire suspension or whatever. Yeah, it's just nice to have a few repair points just to make up for a little bit of trollishness like that and then... Uh, you can still get about your way. Going up to the gateway here, I could have took them both through at the same time, just for me personally. I don't know, I just wanted to take them through one by one. Just to be safe. This is a quick little bit of footage I left in. Um, there's a winch point at the crane, and you can't use it while you're using the crane, but it will work as a winch point. The one on my lead truck, like that medium log crane, it does look like it has a winch point as well, but there's no way to choose it when you go into your winches. But yeah, that crane that's just like a crane on its own, a logging crane on my uh, the second Mustang, that is able to be turned into a winch point. Place the crane wherever it is you want the winch point to be, and then go out of the crane, go to attach winch, and then it'll let you have it as an option. So that's pretty cool. It's uh, Yeah, well, I suppose it's sort of... Again, you can't operate the crane while you're using it as a winch point, so it's not like a full-on crane, but it's still, it's better than nothing. You could probably attach something to it and start lifting it and stuff. A little bit of uh, keen going down there. <laughs> I think I'm not one of those signs off a lamppost as well. So, uh, yeah, going to quarry for this one. Got to cut through this next section of mud, which I thought would uh, overall would be a pretty good test for it. Like I said, I was looking around all the different maps trying to think, like, what missions can I do? I'm for the most part, kind of running out of logging missions in particular. And uh, yeah, I mean, I could handle doing a normal mission with these trucks, but given that they've actually got the uh, the Mudrunner log logging cranes, I really wanted to do a logging mission for this one. And uh, yeah, this was one we had left. And again, you can see climbing through here, I mean, it's making it, but there's slow sections. I actually believe, though, at certain parts cutting through here, um, you know like those roots that are in the granite, they appear in my review videos when I'm on, what's it called, Northport, and I, after doing the cargo container test, I kind of cut from the main road over to where the, uh, the fuel station is, and there's roots that have more recently kind of appeared halfway through that you get your tyres caught in. The only reason I think that is because like now again, I'm not really, it doesn't feel like I'm getting bogged down and stuck. I'm just pretty much stopping dead like I'm hooked on something and I can more tell as well because when I use the winch there it's not even moving me but when I use the winch right over there look you kind of like it before it even makes me go forward it like lifts me right over something and then once I'm over it I'm, I pretty much don't need the winch and I can carry on driving so I do believe I got hooked on something but either way as you can see it's definitely not like broken OP or anything like that it actually you feel it when you're uh, on the right terrain, or the wrong terrain, really. <laughs> well, I suppose the right terrain for this game. So, fr fr throwing out, can't even speak, throwing out a few winches for that one. But again, I don't mind that, it's a nice little uh, sort of balance, really. I don't mind using the winches until I'm forced to use them every two seconds. And then it becomes a little bit repetitive. But yeah, little situations like this, it's, uh, I don't mind. Loaf, he's having a good old time. Not sure what he's doing, having like a shit over the side of the truck or something, but he's hanging on to that, uh, <laughs> logging thing pretty well. To be honest, it was when I travelled through the gateway, 
I think the loose tyre kind of glitched through a little bit, so it's kind of hooked under that logging thing, but it's all good. He's hanging on. He doesn't need to waste a winch. He's a goddamn professional when it comes to hanging on. So, see how many train goes down here? <laughs> see the loaf give the uh, telegraph pole a little slap. Got a little bit squirrely, a little bit bouncy. Start. I just floored it at this point. Sometimes when you tip in, the best thing to do is drop the hammer. And I'm not even saying that because that's what I like to do. I actually believe <laughs> that that is the best way. If you stop, you give him whatever it is time to shift sideways. If you're pulling forward, it's pulling whatever's trying to tip sideways forward instead. And it can help. Not always, but it's definitely got me out of some situations. So this was like, ugh, how's it going to go? Fortunately, though, good steering on it so I can get nice and like parallel to the hill before I'm fully down it. Clip the bumper, but it didn't dig in and make me wheelie. That's probably what I was more worried about. Got over there, and that's it. Jumping over a pretty massive rock at the minute. <laughs> Just about on the home straight. I was like, oh no. You can see under the middle of the truck, there is a pretty, to be fair, a pretty gigantic rock. But I am kind of still slowly driving forward and scuffing that rock along with me. But you can see, once I reverse off it, that's pretty, I'd say that's at least meaty. If not extra meaty. Two of them, for whatever reason, not that I mind, because I always bring enough anyway, but it didn't do that medium log glitch thing where it just lets you keep your logs, but it accepts them that you've sort of dropped them off. So, next up with this one, you see the good thing, the loaf's just got damn professional. He's leaning out that way, because now I cannot tip to the left. I mean, is that not a goddamn horse or a vehicle or what? See, that's why I turn now. And then it, it was my trailer that tipped, not me. But as you can clearly see, the loaf ain't letting me tip. It's the only saving grace of those medium log trailers, really. Is, um... At least once they tip and auto-unpack, because they've got those big, long, tall bars either side, they kind of keep the logs in place, and then once they've unpacked, they tend to, like, lose their weight and flip back to their wheels. So, yeah. Mission done. I have to say, it's not very good payout for that one, considering you have to trek three logs across. I mean, imagine if you didn't have this, like, using mods. I'd have to bring one lot of medium logs at a time, doing that whole journey three times for six grand or something. It's pretty ridiculous. So anyway, I got the loaf off. I've edited a few bits, so this will get it going a little bit quicker. Um, but yeah, this is a little chance to uh, go and kind of finish off this last mission, which is called uh, Test Flight three uh, long logs in Zimnagorsk, which, like I said, I've already delivered two. Climbs up there, no problem. To be fair, I've not really got cargo or anything at this point. Got a goddamn horse, but if it didn't make it up those first hills, I'd be uh, a little bit concerned. And yeah, at some point, I may well do a review on this, like an actual proper review like I do, because um, I think it's uh, pretty good. It's past the initial test. Like I said, I can't, there's no point in me doing a review on every single mod that gets released, because... There's just, I'd never have time for one, but they're, uh, yeah, I kind of like to go through the mods and a few that are really good. I like to do a review on them. So you get to this point as well, crossing this river. But now we're in uh, Zimnogorsk. It's certainly not flying through there. So like I said, if anyone's like, you know, you're not one in the OP nature of some mods, I'd certainly say this is, uh, well, to the point that even my loaf, even the goddamn horse of a vehicle, <laughs> is now pushing... The loaf, by the way, and I've tried it many, many, many times, can drive through this river. He is, of course, a beast. Yeah, there's someone who didn't make it. I rolled, rolled, rusted and wedged up against the rock. Here's uh, Electric Bruce. Not sure why the loaf decided to unpack as OG loaf. Um, yeah, this is the long log trailer thing. That's what I know I already had there. Yoink me little loaf out of the way. Electric Bruce is a very good mod as well, definitely a... Uh, Recommend getting one of them. So in this section here with all the mud, it's ridiculously trollish. I've even got the, uh, what's it called, the twice twin steer here. And even that's like, it, I mean it drives through the mud, but just anything you drive here seems really awkward and slow. And this just gave me really more of an excuse to go and try this crane out. And to be fair, I was... 
I would have preferred to have been like alongside those logs instead of doing it like this, but I'm trying to reverse the uh, the long log trailers are just a pain in the ass. The mud was being a pain in the ass. I didn't have my crane legs out there, <laughs> so I must have been leaning quite a bit. Funnily enough, I must have been leaning on OG Loaf, who stopped me tipping again. He just knows what he's doing. He's a goddamn professional. Yeah, not going to lie, I'm uh, a bit erratic throwing this log around. I'm going to cut some of it out. But the important thing is, even though it's a little bit temperamental, I'm honestly putting the tiniest little inputs into the crane and it's flying around like a mad one. But it didn't let go of the log, and that's the main important thing. When you pack it, it restores the crane, which is good, but for some reason it doesn't restore the crane legs. So just bear that in mind in case you set off and then start dragging them along with you. At this point I got hooked. I believe it's on those um, logs like just that are set in as part of the ground. So yeah, I've got to across the map, down to the bottom, to the, uh, what's it called, the sawmill. Yeah, it's not that rock on the rear tyre I'm stuck on. Yeah, it was like those logs on the floor. I think one of the tyres kind of got hooked underneath it. So yeah, this was just a little test to see how it goes with the, uh, uh, what do you call it, the long logs? Old Loaf's chilling. <laughs> He's like, nope, I'm staying here. Staying with OG Loaf. He's like, long time no see, Loaf. Time to catch up. <laughs> see, still. He's like, nope. Loaf only goes where he wants to go. And he goes where he needs to go. See if we can get it in high, which is uh, pretty nice. Again, this is like a pretty notoriously muddy, boggy road section that most of you would have uh, had nightmares about if you've played Zimnagors for long enough. And this is what I mean. It's certainly not like beyond the realm of what the in-game vehicles do. I'd say the Dolphin would be about the same speed through here. The Tager, I mean vehicles without diffs would possibly even go a little bit slower. But pretty much everything I've taken through that section goes slow, there's not really any way around it. Possibly the only exception might be like the Cat 745C, but that's kind of almost on a permanent slow mode anyway. And again, I wish they'd just let the Cat 745C have a medium logging trailer. If it could, that would now make that vehicle a lot more useful because without mods I still don't think there's anything with a medium log carriage thing on the back of the actual chassis. And obviously yeah the Cat 745C is the only in-game thing that can but it can't have a trailer so it's still limited to one and it's bloody slow and it's articulated steering's a bit iffy to say the least. What I tended to find with this, especially going along this boggy road, you'll kind of see more coming up here. You're best off to kind of try and skirt along the edge of the road more really than actually handle the bogginess. When I fly into there I immediately get caught on that tree you can kind of see that'll soon yeah, disappear. But it was looking like it was going to be this slow all the way. I was like, oh hell no. <laughs> I'm either finding a different way or we're abandoning mission because I don't need footage of me going one mile an hour for the next ten minutes. But yeah, you can see the clear like the road that it's kind of hinting that you would go. Sod that, skirt down the side. I mean, to be fair, I kind of like that idea. I mean, people would have seen it before, whether it's footpaths or, like, off-roading sections, but where there's, like, a muddy area that's been heavily trodden or driven on that's completely chewed up, eventually people would skirt around the edge of it, and I suppose that's what, like, the game's not spelling it out for you, but it's kind of up to you to use your intuition and skirt down the uh, the fairly unploughed edges instead of the completely boggy, horrific road, in quotation marks. See, again now, I'm pretty convinced I'm hooked on something, because I didn't just get stuck, I stopped dead. And I, I'm not sure what it is, to be honest. I mean, I've drove this, obviously, a a fair little bit in the last couple of days, other than what's made it into videos. Oh, it might have been that giant rock. That would probably make sense. I'll accept. Um, yeah, and when you're driving through mud, I mean, it can go slow and pretty much get stuck in mud. 
potentially, but it doesn't stop dead like it was there. It'll still, you know, be crawling through at half a mile an hour or whatever. Again, trying to sort of skirt along the edges, cut straight over the road and skirt along this side. I can see those logs like laid on the floor there. Pretty good for grip once you get on them. Better than mud anyway. But yeah, overall, I mean, it's hauling these logs reasonably. Well enough that I feel like progress is being made, but not to the point where it also feels what's the point in doing the mission if it's just going to be absolute like, you know, point and square the trigger and that's it. Wake me up when it's done. So hopefully we get, uh, yeah, Phase 4 pretty soon. I'm most likely, well, I'll be doing, again, like, essentially two playthroughs of Phase 4. I'll, uh, I'll be doing my normal playthrough where I don't use mods. And then I'll have this playthrough where uh, I'll be checking Phase 4 out with mods. And, yeah, I'll certainly be using some of these Mustangs on it because they're just, they're, yeah, they're just quite nice trucks. I mean, overall, I was saying this to someone the other day in the comments, there's a lot of nice trucks now in the mod section. Like, a lot of them have been tried and tested the... The ones that quite, uh, went quite up to the bar have kind of faded away or gone completely or they're sort of a bit further down the list or whatever. But yeah, there's a lot of strong strong mods at the minute that kind of, like I said, cater to all aspects, really. There's certainly beast mode OP mods. And then there's stuff like this, which really, this could just as easily be added in the game and not be a mod. That was where... I mean, what, I, I hit it hard and did, like, two engine damage, and then tapped it a tiny little bit with my wheel, blew my tyre up, nailed a lot of my suspension. It was now, by the way, when the down button on my D-pad decided to only work here, there, and everywhere. I'm trying to scroll down now. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, that was the repair kit. It was 200 repair points, so not as much as a goddamn horse, but I mean, that's to be expected. He is a goddamn professional. Uh, and I believe 120 fuel, which again, that's still enough if you suddenly realise, oh crap, I'm out of fuel. You can bang that in and probably make it to the nearest fuel station. It didn't have any spare tyres though, so hence why I've still got a blown tyre. That was the last of the logs I needed there. I mean, that mission was at 17 odd grand. That's a little bit more like it, to be fair. But yeah, overall, uh, I enjoyed it. It was a good truck, good mod, worth getting. I'd certainly say the six-wheeled version is the better of the two, but... That's more option-wise than the vehicles themselves. And this was just a quick bit of messing around just to give you some idea of how strong the grabby-ness of the crane is. I grabbed the loose tyre, lifted it in the air, even to the point the crane then decided just to flop back down to the floor. But as you can see, it's hanging on to the loose tyre for dear life and pretty much until I let go of the crane, it ain't letting go. I have, I've been able to lift a loaf like this with the normal SnowRunner log crane. But as soon as you jiggle the loaf around in the air a bit, it, the crane just, yeah, arcade mechanics, slips loose, and that's it. And this is just one last one. Uh, it will show you the overall length of the crane and the fact that it can lift Taz, which is not the heaviest vehicle in the world, but it feels like it's doing a better job than the, uh, the Azov Bruce to the left of the screen with the standard crane. But anyway, yeah, that's about it for today, though. I hope you've enjoyed. I hope that helps. Thanks for watching. Get yourself a loaf and uh, get yourself a Mustang. Thanks to our Patreon members, and I'll be back soon.